that's a lot of head. That's like Cindy Ben 2001 head. Wait a minute. Whoa, guys. I'm in a mood for some haze tonight. So, yeah, that's it. Um, I don't know why there's so much head there, but I'm not going to complain. Um, just less, less alcohol, less alcoholic drug that gets into my body. But anyway, let's turn it around. It smells good. Ton, a ton of stuff going on in that. All right, guys. It's Tuesday night. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Ow! Fuck you, Cindy Ben 2001. All right, so just a quick little walkthrough. Uh, those kegs that you've seen in my teaser, there they are, all of them. Um, went to uh, my local homebrew shop uh, Saturday afternoon. Got two cases of bombers and one case of 12 ounce bottles, and I'll be damned if I didn't use all of them and have one pint left over. So, yeah, I couldn't do that again if I had to. All right, um, let's uh, sit down and talk about a few things. Got some upcoming stuff that can be pretty. All right, guys, I am glistening at this point. I just got through, got through doing my uh, 20 minutes of cardio up there, so uh, it's time for beer. Just have a little sweat going on. I did get my hair cut all pretty for you guys. Um, so, so besides the uh, the bottling, I got done the seven. There's about seven and a half or so gallons bottled. Um, so yeah, uh, a lot of that's going to be stored. Um, I'm going to ship the majority of those 12 ounce bottles out. Hopefully, I got 24 bottles. I really only planned on shipping 12. I'm keeping 12 to ship. Um, but <clears throat> oh, excuse me, they were sitting around, and I wasn't done. Um, the keg wasn't kicked yet, so I could either had two options: either bottle the rest and put what little bit I had left in a keg on tap or go ahead and stop at the two cases of bombers and uh, half the case of 12, uh, 12, 12 ounce bottles of uh, and um, just keep the rest on tap. Well, I figured, fuck it, I, I got to get some beers bottled up more than just that. I got to get some of my, my haze bottled up. I got to get the um, Baltic Porter, the uh, Berliner, and the um, Blueberry Black IPA um, bottled and uh, sent out beer mail. I've got some people who need some beer mails for me. Um, so if I didn't say that there's two kegs that I just bottled, that was the, uh, the, um, bourbon barrel coffee brown. Um, I don't know how much alcohol that the barrel added to it. Um, it's got a little bourbon burn to it when you drink it, but it's got a lot of coffee and a lot of vanilla, a lot of bourbon in it. Um, so it's really good. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with that beer. Um, I got my collab beer hanging out. Um, I checked it over, gave it a taste test uh, Saturday evening when I was done with all everything else, and it's pretty good, pretty good stuff. Um, the uh, I got another week, then I'm gonna go ahead and transfer that to keg. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and force carve that, um, use one of my tubes, stainless steel tubes, and um, dry hop it. Then at that point, when I'm done dry hopping it, I'll leave that in there and I'll just bottle it from the keg, you know, so I'm basically dry hopping, keg hopping, whatever, and, um, go from there and let everything ride, um, so yeah, that'd be awesome, really looking forward to that beer, um, looking forward more to getting Andrew's version of that beer, um, yeah, so it'll be pretty awesome, then, I was sitting around yesterday, and I've been kicking around the idea of doing, um, a bread IPA, so, this beer, come on, focus, focus, Daniel, sir, Come on, come on, baby. It's not the focus, I'll read it to you. This is um, Urban Artifact, local um, Cincinnati brewery. They do uh, mainly sours, uh, Brett beers. They do do, do do, huh, poop, poop. They uh, do some um, not so sour beers. But anyway, this is called uh, Phrenology. It's a wild style IPA. Um, it's batch number five. This was brewed in March of this year. And an IPA with wild yeast, Brettomyces. Um, can we drink young or old? Then it's got a little scale in there. Um, from March, it's hoppy. June, then it goes to funky in September. Then uh, March of next year. Um, so this being a Brett IPA, it still has Brett living in here. So what I'm going to do, I've got another six pack of these because I can't get enough of these, right? So I've got this gallon fermenter, nice and clean. 
um, what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to get like a probably a thousand mil or a two thousand mil starter. Um, I'm going to do that this weekend and um, go ahead and fill this up. And as I drink the dregs, as I drink these bottles, I'm going to put the dregs into that. So, in essence, I'm doing a Solera, right, with a Brett strain. So then, by the time I'm ready, which, honestly, I don't think I'm going to brew that for probably you know, three weeks, four weeks, maybe, maybe sooner, I don't know. I just got a lot going on. Ah, cheers, guys. Um, I got a lot going on, so um, we'll see what happens, but I think, I think that'll work. Um, I probably, I'm, I'm still debating whether I go ahead and do an initial fermentation with just like a little bit of a USO5 or SO4. Just, I, I've got a pack of SO, um, SO4 up there that's, it's old, and I just may pitch a little bit of it just to get the fermentation started, and then just go ahead and start dumping this as I go. Um, you know, it's okay for the um, primary, if I do it, go ahead and pitch sack, it's okay for that to sit the whole lifestyle, lifetime of the bread, because the bread will actually eat um, any all flavors that that yeast cake may get. Uh, let me let me backtrack and say, as long as the yeast cake isn't to a certain size where the bread can't theoretically keep up with the off flavors produced by the uh, yeast cake. So I don't. I may just go ahead and make it 100% bread and go from there. Right? I think that'll be fine. And uh, check my gravity. You know, if I'm ends up going to shit and uh, it's no good, well then I'm out. You know, whatever time I've got making that starter, because I was gonna buy that stinking beer anyway, right? So, anyway, it's just a little bit of time, a uh, little bit of money for whatever DME that I use. So that's that plan. Um, oh, excuse me. And if you can't tell, I'm a little aggravated. I'm a nice person. I'm not going to preach to you about things, but, you know, trolls aggravate me. Um, been lucky through my, oh man, almost three years now on YouTube. Yeah, it's almost three years on YouTube that, you know, 40 ounce guys have probably hit on me a few times, but those guys, you know, that's like the WWE of, um, of uh, the drinking community, beer community. You know, most of that stuff's all show and those guys are going to say their things and that's fine. It's funny to me. Um, but when you got people like, um, Cindy Ben 2001 that uh, I, don't, I don't know what's wrong with that lady you know it'd be different if uh, she realized what she's doing because it's every time she posts on anybody's video it's always the same cut and paste comments it's a lack of intelligence on her part I don't know probably I think she's off her meds just aggravates me um, self-righteous um, needs to keep her mouth shut you know I don't know what to go. I don't know where to go before I get angry. Um, so I blocked her. So if she's, if she's watching this, that's great. Go ahead and try to comment. I don't care. I don't need the drama. I don't want the drama. Life's hard enough. Life's hard enough, kids. Um, so yeah. Like I've said several times, this whole YouTube thing is it's not easy for anybody, right? You're putting yourself out there. This is for everybody to see, right? So... You take a chance every time you hit the upload button. You take a chance that somebody's going to call you a dick. Somebody's going to call you a moron. Somebody's going to make fun of your beard or make fun of your bald head or something. It's always going to happen. Somebody's going to critique what you do. Whatever. But, um, yeah. Let me get off my soapbox and I'm going to get out of here. Alright, guys. Cheers! Ah. Uh...